Look into what? Right ho. Q Telecine. Fifty years ago, the world was very different. The first manned space flight had only just taken place. Yet most trains were still powered by steam. And television was in black and white. Just as the 60s were about to swing, a new TV series was commissioned to feature congregations singing in their own churches. It was called Songs of Praise. In the first of three special programs to celebrate our 50th birthday, we return to the church where it all began to enjoy the same hymns that were sung in the very first program. Plus reminiscences from Geoffrey Wheeler and Sir Cliff Richard. Nineteen sixty one, the year of the twist, was when Songs of Praise was born at six fifteen on October the first. It came from Tabernacle Capel at Bedothwea. Tabernacle Welsh Baptist Church in the centre of Cardiff. Well, the world has changed, except that hymn singing is still right at the heart of what we do. And hymns don't get much better than our first one today, with its tune named after the Rhonda Valley, and inspirational words from William Williams, the writer known as the Sweet Singer of Wales. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Out steps Prince Charles, as always, looking tremendously fresh. Songs of Praise's roots lay firmly in Wales. As part of the celebrations following his investiture in 1969, the country's new prince took part in a programme from Swansea. And earlier in the decade, it was a Welshman who, by a fortunate coincidence, was responsible for commissioning the very first programme. Before lunch one Sunday, I switched on the television set 
and by chance there happened to be a programme I didn't know was going out in Welsh from a Welsh chapel in Cardiff, I think it was. And I happened to watch it, wondering what, what the devil it was doing there from the Crystal Palace transmitters. The force came, I think, from the wholehearted, uninhibited quality of the song. This experience inspired a programme of hymn singing in English to be commissioned, and a producer for the new series was appointed. One of my jobs was to find a suitable title for the series. And it had been a hymn singing festival, naturally I turned to the Bible and to the Book of Psalms. And in Psalm 147 I found this in Welsh. Molo harar glwydd, canis da yw cani un diw ni, which in English is, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. And that gave me the clue. It had to be songs of praise. Many of the early presenters were clergymen, and the man who introduced the hymns in the first program was a Congregationalist minister from Aberystwyth. I think that probably television had only been in existence for just a few years, and the chief image that it conveyed was that it was a secular animal, despite the fact that there were religious programs in Welsh. But this is, was the program, I think, that brought home to most people that this was the vehicle that could convey the most delicate, sensitive emotions of the soul as well. felt vulnerable in 1961 with nuclear war seeming a distinct possibility. The top news stories included the summit between Prime Minister Harold Macmillan and President Kennedy, the building of the Berlin Wall and demonstrations against nuclear weapons. Not only was the world very different in 1961, television was as well with just two channels to choose from. However, there were some programs we'd still recognize. The Sky at Night has had the same presenter, Sir Patrick Moore, since its first programme in 1957. You know, if I'd come on the air when we did the first of these Sky at Night programmes, 
and said that within five years, I'd be showing you pictures of the first man to go round the Earth in orbit in a spaceship. Well, I think you'd have regarded me as mad. But nevertheless, it has happened. And Blue Peter has been entertaining and informing children for nearly 53 years. We will be back in a fortnight's time when we'll be starting a brand new cartoon serial about a red Indian boy called Little Watha. So, see you all then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Popular programmes on the day Songs of Praise was first broadcast included What's My Line? Are you then a film actor? <laughs> and the often anarchic Sooty and Sweep show. <laughs> no, 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 no. Full-length dramas and concerts often featured in the schedule. Soprano Heather Harper sang leading roles in televised operas like La Traviata and also took part in the first ever Songs of Praise. And singing a hymn from that first programme is one of today's brightest singing stars, Ellen Manahan Thomas. <laughs>